Welcome, magical ones, to my exploration of the mysterious feminine archetypes of the witch, as you requested. I am, yeah, really wanting to speak to the various, um, yeah, feminine archetypes that show up in, in the journey of secret witch to witch queen. Um, and this is something that maybe kind of culturally, we often lack that initiation into the feminine mystery and the power and magic of the feminine archetypes of the witch. So this is something that's really, really important to speak to. Um, yeah, particularly because you might not always be evident or clear that they are calling to you. So yeah, this is a really important one for me. It's certainly been something that I've seen as part of my own journey that has really been where I've reclaimed some of my power and magic. And yeah, often it is that kind of, it's a mystery. The feminine is a mystery to our culture. It's, it's particularly um, as we, as we, as women, we are kind of offered throughout our journey in, in the feminine, through, throughout our journey as women, we're offered these kind of choice points that are often unconscious. Um, and so the work with these various feminine archetypes is really an invitation to reclaim the energy that we've kind of repressed and suppressed and shoved down that is magical, that's, that's kind of, yeah, allowing our fullest expression. So yeah, typically our ancestors would have really celebrated all of these various archetypes that I'm going to be exploring with you. Um, they would have kind of, yeah, within their village, really kind of initiated women into these various different portals and celebrated, I guess, the journey of feminine mystery and these each of the initiations into the various different phases of the lifestyle, life cycle of the feminine. And um, these are kind of archetypal energies, if you like, um, that contain uh, really valuable gold as we work with them to begin to reclaim them. And I'm going to start off by kind of guiding you through the typical ones that are within the life cycle and then maybe expand into some other feminine archetypes as we journey through. But um, yeah, there's uh, to, so when I say what I, what I mean when I say by that, just in case you're not familiar, we're going to be uh, exploring in this mini series uh, each different archetype. So when we think about the feminine life cycle, um, we're talking about really uh, maiden, lover, mother, crone, and queen. Uh, or crone slash wise woman, which is the archetype that I have worked with embodying, because I'm not at that point of my life of crone yet, but there's still a, a kind of very valuable wisdom contained within that uh, energetic that we can work with to reclaim, even if we haven't yet got to that part of that life cycle. So these are, yeah, ultimately powerful lenses with within which we can use to really see where we have been stuck or trapped or kept ourselves trapped within these um, these energies and what the gold is that we can reclaim by working with them. So each of these uh, I'm going to be taking you through to be able to see where you are kind of, yeah, where you can work with that archetype a little bit deeper to reveal more gold and reclaim your power and magic. Um, yeah, and these also tie into the various uh, blood mysteries as a woman that we have. So um, by blood mysteries, uh, there's a, a gorgeous episode with um, Sean Pilkington on The Secret Witch, so if you want to have a little read, uh, listen to that. Um, but by blood mysteries, just as a simple kind of overview, what I mean is there's kind of initiations into our bleed, whether that's first bleed, uh, monarchy, whether that's just, um, you know, our, our menstrual cycle in general. Um, um, and also um, birth uh, is another part of that powerful part, part of that portal. And also um, when we when we go into kind of um, yeah that that kind of crone of menopause, that crone archetype uh, of menopause. So those are what I mean by the blood mysteries. There are these are the kind of powerful points of choice and and powerful reclamation that we work with with these energies. And in terms of just linking that as well into the cycle, um, obviously each month we have these archetypal energies kind of um, within each of our cycles if, if we do menstruate still. So um, 
on our bleed there's a kind of like um if we think about it as as autumn as like the uh, seasonal so the spring summer autumn winter there is also this within each of our cycles as well so these and again these energies tie into spring summer autumn winter maiden is very much spring so i'm going to be going into the different the different ways that this shows up as well and each of these really offer us a chance to just begin to um, see where we've been suppressing these energies and be able to move into a deeper expression of who we are. So uh, just to give that a bit of context in this first one, so this video will firstly be a little bit longer than, than the rest of them, um, but it's yeah really important to give some context to why this is so important to work with the feminine mysteries of the witch in this way. And we're we're going to start off with Maiden. Now, as you can see, uh, I am embodying Maiden and, and her energetic in my, in how I'm, how I'm showing up today in kind of this, yeah, the yellow dress. Um, this, this kind of is a, is a way that I embody archetypes myself. Um, and it's, it's a very powerful way for me. I think I remember, um, once before saying that, um, in my embodiment of the queen, I find it very, very difficult to kind of pop out of queen and start acting in, in some shadow shadowy ways uh, and once to the to the extreme I was telling my client the other day the extreme was that once I actually kind of got into my have to derobe out of my queen's <laughs> queen's embodied outfit into some joggers just so that I could have a meltdown that was a while back now um right at the start of my journey but it's uh it's quite shows you quite quite powerfully how um we can work with embodiment to really harness the energy available within each of these archetypes. So yeah, Maiden is that kind of very spring, very youthful kind of um, energy, that kind of, um, if we talk about, um, bringing it back to the stage of our cycle it's that phase of our cycle where we've just we've just had our bleed and we're kind of moving into that like really fresh beginning to bloom energy um yeah and and uh, that's it's really that kind of tender opening that kind of um yeah just beginning to allow ourselves to have that so that seed of an idea that kind of dreamy state the maiden is that very dreamy um yeah open curious playful energy the maiden brings and um that kind of innocence as well there's like an innocence a naivety in the maiden there's uh, she's full of life she's full of energy she's beginning to like find her way in the world and <clears throat> again often that kind of first bleed is that initiation into the next phase of her life so it's kind of that time where there's that kind of youthful innocence that kind of beauty that uh, vitality that energy and she's kind of radiant um in her in her fullness so this is what is available to us as we begin to work with reclaiming our maiden and reclaiming her consciously because often we have had that kind of aspect of ourselves we've kind of lost it um, along the way. It's not necessarily been valued um, in, in society. And yeah, the witch, the witch maiden specifically, if we think about the witch and how she, she's like this creative force of power, um, really the maiden is where um, we're beginning to open up to creation, that kind of having those ideas and uh, dreaming, um, dreaming them to life without kind of having to take action. The action comes as, as a later part of the cycle. It's just really allowing ourselves to just be with Ooh, what is what is feeling juicy? What is feeling aligned for us? And yeah, allowing those creative ideas to really bubble up, and um, hearing hearing the call, hearing the call of soul. Yeah, that kind of playful dreaming, like allowing ourselves to just be fully in in like our dreams, in our in our hopes, in our possibility, um, which is something that is often shut down in the witch, and um, it's that kind of intention setting as well so the witch the witch wound is often something that can come in um as part of our conditioning as part of uh, it's kind of ingrained into ourselves as well as 
specifically as magical ones. But um, there's that kind of, uh, we've been really shut down um, from this way of being often as witches, that kind of early creative life cycle of the feminine um, is kind of suppressed, uh, particularly culturally. Um, and that kind of fear uh, that was so understandable and so innocently picked up from the idea of the witch wound. You know, when, when women were uh, dreaming, uh, when women were playful, joyful, um, and kind of allowing stuff to bubble up to their own magic to bubble up that was uh, really heavily shut down by them being burned at the stake so it makes perfect sense that we also especially as magical ones really shut down these young creative kind of playful parts of ourselves um and it was also something um that just isn't culturally valued. Um, so I remember I was thinking about this, m my own journey with this. And one of the things that came up as I was reflecting on this was how like my mum, when I was younger, had been kind of heavily critical of being a dreamer. I think um, because my dad left when I when I was young, I remember her always referring to him as like this hopeless dreamer, this um, naive dreamer and I think that was the story that I picked up about Maiden like she's just naive and stupid and you have to be more switched on more kind of aware more uh, less trusting um less kind of open like shut down close up don't don't allow yourself to bloom just kind of yeah protect and move into the next action cycle of life this is uh, this is something that um is kind of a shadowy way that the Maiden is repressed in her kind of beautiful dream dreamy playful energy and what it what it comes down to is this idea that being a dreamer or having dreams uh, is wrong and there's there's something in that around approval um, we often talk about the different shadows that come up as part of the witch and this is a huge one this is so the maiden energy of the witch is actually um, often where our wounding initially first comes in is this kind of shutting down of uh, our intentions shutting down of our dreams and our visions because they're not welcome, they're not approved of. So there's this kind of real um, shadowy approval that comes in with the maiden um, often and it kind of shuts her down, shuts down that kind of vital, beautiful, dreamy, um, innocent, playful energy. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's one way that um, it can show up and it can create us to be maybe kind of more codependent, that kind of sense of, um, for me, I call it my pulsatilla shadow, which is where I'm kind of like in that helpless, um, oh, I can't do it, I need to be rescued kind of sense. Um, as well with the, with the maiden um, that kind of yeah learning that I needed somebody else to do it for me or yeah I somehow needed to be rescued um, also comes with not reclaiming our power with the maiden and I, I suspect also actually um, later parts of maybe lover as well so that kind of transition from maiden into into lover as well there's also um, uh, another uh, way that can show up there's that we talk about polarity a lot in this path there's kind of the it's it's uh, the approval is one end of the shadow pole at the opposite there's kind of the good girl vibe like we learn to be good because our mothers uh, teach us uh, that that or, or we take the message from our mothers that it's not safe to to be our own full expression so that's at one point we turn into the good girl the opposite end of that spectrum which we may come to in kind of latter maiden years is the kind of rebel vibe so we might might have spent quite a lot of time over here in good girl and then we will swing because we're fed up of being the good girl we'll swing into this kind of rebel vibe of the maiden this kind of yeah sod you i'm gonna do it this way um this kind of yeah um showing up uh, kind of in more kind of risky behaviors i guess um I don't know if I like the word risky, it makes it sound unsafe, but there's the kind of more dark ways that, that the maiden will express herself. Um, so that could be, you know, just completely rejecting everything that anybody else says and kind of, yeah, just just uh, doing the opposite of everything that is um, expected of her, which can, can, yeah, just create all sorts of chaos uh, and drama. So that's another way um, that the this maiden energy can can show up, and um, 
Yeah, kind of. Uh, there's a there's often um, a lot of uh, rebels uh, in this path. Actually, there's a lot of a re rebel rebel vibes, and I know I've been there myself, kind of swinging between that pole of good girl and rebel, um, which can be alchemized. And um, yeah, there's um, there's a sense though before we move into the alchemy, there's a sense of it just not being safe for us to allow ourselves to begin to bloom. And so that is what is on offer with the, with the maiden, is that kind of return to that playful, opening, soft, kind of, yeah, joyful, playful, dreamy uh, state that is such a vital aspect of being a witch. Um, and yeah, there's, um, there is that tendency to just, uh, especially culturally, to really just kind of jump into go, 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 do, do, do. So that spring part of the cycle is something that is, yeah, to be, to be honoured. And the maiden is a way that we can begin to do that. Um, and yeah, as I said, often we will kind of miss that initiation from maiden into lover and kind of go straight from being a child, learning to be approved of or rebel against and then just move straight into do, 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 completely missing what is on offer to us as we go into our first bleed. What is that initiation really offering us to, you know, who are we to become as we move into the next phase of our lives? Who are we choosing to be? So it's it's very unconscious and innocently done. But the working with this archetype is what kind of allows us to begin to reclaim that choice. Like which parts of the maiden do we want to lovingly allow to express? Do we want to allow that kind of dreamy, soul-fulfilling energy um, that the that is a huge part of the witch and how she creates? You know, the spring part of the cycle, the the kind of yeah, that energy of spring and creation creation is and that so, like sowing a new seed that new beginnings energy is such a, a huge aspect of the witch and how she creates so to ignore the maiden to suppress the maiden to leave her over there in the corner when she has wanted probably for her whole life to express what she wants to express to allow those seeds that have been within her right since she was a little girl um is so so important if we want to create from soul and we can get stuck in that shadowy maiden, that one that seeks the approval or rebels. And both of those are shadowy. We get stuck in that inner child who's playing out those innocent patterns because that's what she's learned. And yet, yeah, there's that in that space, I think uh, many of our secret witches here feel very trapped, feel like they lack the freedom. And yet, working with this archetype, this kind of maiden witch is totally what will offer you transformation here to be able to begin to yeah create in new ways to begin to begin to reclaim your playfulness your dream dreaminess and uh yeah um so much power in that so much power for you to be, begin to live from soul so yeah i think um the invitation is into alchemizing that. So I guess for uh, an inquiry, I would just begin to uh, invite you to notice, just begin to notice where you are seeing the maiden energy being suppressed. Where are you shutting down that play, that dreaminess, that kind of innocence, that joy, um, that kind of fresh, uh, vitality, the kind of ideas that are coming up. Where where do you suppress those? What and why? What is the reason? Is it because of the kind of approval? Is it because of the rebel? These are really important things to begin to notice and there's a real power in noticing um, and that is a huge part of the alchemy. Um, so yeah and, and of course the invitation is always to go there with as much love as possible. A maiden wants so much love, <laughs> so, especially the wounded maiden. She's uh, she's had a lot of criticism so yeah slowly slowly, gently gently just invite her to come back out to play, invite her to begin to allow herself to dream but the biggest thing is to illuminate the shadow that is in the way of her doing so so begin with that noticing um, this is something that we are going to be exploring and working with this whole cycle 
uh, in Feminine Mystery, Invoke Your Feminine Mystery, which starts in June. So um, yeah, this is going to be um, a huge part of our work. You're going to be guided, if, you, if you're feeling the call to join us, you're going to be guided through this life cycle of the feminine in order to reclaim your power and magic from each of these different phases. And I'm going to explore the other phases in the next few of these of these video series. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, but yeah, if you're feeling the call to join us, do reach out. Uh, I am hosting Alchemy Calls at the moment for enrollment. So um, yeah, reach out and we can, we can explore if this is for you. But next week, I will be diving into the next phase of the life cycle, which is the lover. So um, yeah, very excited for that one. And I'm going to leave it there with all my love. Any questions, let me know. I'm always happy to answer. Mwah.